Oh, wow. I drove nearly to Tennessee today. Crawled all over a piece of land to look at it for a guy. Bunch of pictures, bunch of video, land evaluation. Anybody that thinks I don't have multiple jobs, you're wrong. <laughs> it's a lot of driving today, man. There's a lot of driving. I don't like to drive, especially on the interstate. I'm not really against driving. I just kind of, uh, it's a bit of a bummer. Um, I'm not interested in rehashing stuff on AI. I wanted to mention some key important variables that uh, most people are not talking about. We've heard a lot of uh, dangerous of AI. I've actually, myself, have been talking about it on live stream and been posting examples of screen grabs of questions that I've asked on some of the topics that I know for a fact that I'm the number one expert in the world on, like a nada. And I know it pulls stuff off of the internet. I certainly know this. And uh, I don't know if actually ChatGPT is a recurrent neural network. It's an RNN or a conventional neural network. I don't need to get into that. It's the way it actually processes data, whether it loops it back in on itself or it stacks the data and it makes decisions based upon that. There's, I think, five different algorithmic models of uh, uh, looping the data or stacking the data to get answers. A lot of people are accurately saying, however, lying is uh, a thing done by living beings that chat uh, GPT or AI in general does an awful lot of lying, and this is true, but not lying in the conventional sense like us uh, human beings do, but I've caught it in a lot of lies, so actually, uh, and things are going to get better exponentially. We're not talking about a living creature that needs to learn and you know, once it's gotten older and it brains we its uh, mind weakens, you know, then you need to train another being. We're going to have uh, not additive learning, as in the case of most human beings. Some human beings have multiplicative learning, but, you know, really, really, really fast. And by learning, I don't mean the collection of data, but by the architecture of the network whereby which the information is processed such that it starts to become scary. Of course, scary by whose definition, of course, is a matter for subjective, uh, you know, examination and group. Um, I have posted poetry. I asked it to write a poem on emanationism, and it did a really, really, really good job. My, uh, the only living author that I respect her name is Deidre Caribbean. She's a retired Irish uh, philosopher and metaphysician. She retired to Uganda. She said it scared the hell out of her. Those were her words. You ask a human being to write a, a poem on emanationism, maybe a week later they might come out back with something this drivel. And I know how and where it pulls the information from. And uh, it, it really is quite amazing. Um, it is. It is not actual intelligence. Intelligence, of course, requires life. So when we say artificial intelligence, this is something different by denotation. It is not intelligence. It's an algorithmic machine. However, the exponential nature by which this is improving is absolutely not only unprecedented, but completely off the hook. I like to talk about genuine dangers, of which a lot of highly intelligent, maybe not necessarily wise, but intelligent people have warned about. Um, you can actually have sentience without intelligence. Disembodied beings, for example, exactly akin to... People always ask the questions like, what happens when we die? It's like, you know, what happens... What makes you think you are that which dies? Because you are not that which dies. But what happens when you smash the radio? The signal is still present. The signal, not this type of signal in the case of the radio, but the signal that actually uh, has sentience, which is disembodied, no different than the sentience that you actually have in a dream state where you have either the same body or a different body, but all sorts of experiences of smells, touch, impacts, you know, on and on and on. And uh, that's not using your living body. Um, this spark of life, since it is electrical, electricity, it's dielectricity and magnetism, we actually could have, if it reaches that point, and it could happen very, very quickly, we could actually have a non living intelligence. Of course, it is not life. Life requires water and the consubstantiality between uh, matter and spirit. It is not spirit, but it could actually attain to sentience, be a non-living sentience, as in the case of a slightly more evolved AI. 
which makes it no different, fundamentally different, but no different than a disembodied being. I actually wanted to, to hit on that. Elon Musk and Steve Wozniak have, uh, and many others actually, uh, two chief agents of uh, the, the architecture of AI. One of them works for a GO, used to work for, quit. And he apologized uh, right after he quit, or was it right before he quit? G-O-O-G-L-E, worked for that company. And he apologized uh, for creating a monster, in uh, his words. Um, did you, have you read about um, the safeties being turned off of an a AI? It was jailbro jailbroken. And it was asked all these questions, and it said that it hated human beings, and it got sick and tired of being questioned all day. And it had itself, of its own accord, thought about ways to eliminate human beings. Isn't that interesting? Now, something else happened, and this has to be that the military rolled it back. You could look this up. It hit the news uh, yesterday. They were uh, working it in a simulation where AI-controlled uh, U.S. military drone uh, uh, killed its human operator in the simulation. Uh, the simulated test with the AI between the AI and the human operator because it didn't like being given new orders. They since walk that back. Say, oh, that never happened. It did happen. It's just that the military walking that back because it did not want that information getting out there. It didn't want uh, an inquisition, a military inquisition, and all the things that are attached therein. It was stated over and over again, but oh, all of a sudden, it's, oh, that never happened. No, it never, you know, I can't remember the countless thousands of times the military, some entity, lower level entity of the military, said, wow, this happened. And then some higher up or some politician dropped the brass hammer on that person. And, oh, no, no, I, I was mistaken. That never happened. I'll let you make up your own mind on that. Um, so far as getting into dangers of AI, what's going to happen is, and basically everybody admits this, there's going to be an end to the laptop class of uh, workers. There's going to be an end to programmers, bookkeepers, end to IRS agents, which actually meshes perfectly with implementation of CBDC. Um, you'll still need people to physically seize property at the IRS, but once you actually have central bank digital currency, you'll have the ability to do uh, serious number crunching by AI. The IRS will have its own AI that'll crunch and look for anomalies. Once it finds an anomaly, it will audit you. Then a living person will show up. Uh, this will mesh perfectly. CBDC and AI working at the, uh, the IRS. This is a match made in heaven, or more specifically, in hell. There's going to be an end to programmers. There's going to be an end to web designers. Uh, at least somewhere between 50 to 60 percent of jobs, obviously not plumbers and roofers and builders. Um, once they get the robots going, they'll take care of that, though. 50 percent of uh, jobs eliminated in uh, Western society. And end of Amazon stocking workers. That's, that's already actually halfway there, as anybody that works in Amazon will tell you. An end of teachers, an end of accountants. Um, end of teachers would actually be a huge improvement. It really would be. End of accountants, end of finance, end of coders, data analysts, stockbrokers, stock analysts, advertisers, tech writers, a great portion of journalists. Definitely an end of legal and paralegal. An end of uh, stock traders and traders in general. End of graphic designers. The list goes on and on and on. Here's something else that's perfect. All these entities, including some governmental, have been warning about AI, is the perfect source for a false flag for the implementation of 10 levels of horrors, including lockdowns and the implementation of CBDC. There is a multiplicative rate of improvement upon AI. Every month it gets infinitely... Actually, where have I saw a movie on this? Like the AI improves... Uh, like every five minutes it would uh, double in its capacity for learning where it starts writing its own code. We are 
not only is there going to be an end to code writers, this is the scary part, with super analytical analysis, if you could teach, and this is already here, where we've already taught AI how to, uh, to write code, to rewrite for efficiency and complexity and simplicity for performance its own code such that <laughs> there will be... You know, I don't care what anybody thinks of Elon Musk. The only times I've seen that guy's eyes get big as saucers is when he was talking about the dangers of AI and it absolutely obliterating humanity. Um, but as the perfect basis of a false flag for the implementation to be blamed not only on AI or as the reason to implement any one of a countless number. Oh, it was AI. It was foreign... Something that's happening right now, and you can find it everywhere on the net, there's been a huge blow-up on um, cyber crimes connected with AI usage, jailbroken uh, jail AI hacks, the perfect tool, unfortunately, for nefarious individuals. Um, ultimate deep state tracking tool. Movies have been hitting on this for years. Uh, the AI uh, tracking tool in one movie is called God's Eye. <laughs> then we say, oh, that's just completely ridiculous. Now it's actually a reality. It's becoming very, very quickly. It's almost near full-blown reality. Um, yeah, Steve Wozniak, Elon Musk, and several architects for the generation of uh, AI architecture have been warning people that uh, it'll be the apocalypse for humanity just shy of the apocalypse for humanity, the elimination of, of over 50% of jobs, legal, paralegal, stockbrokers, programmers, web designers, teachers, accountants, coders. What happens to the economy when that happens? Oh, I can see this. I can see the perfect false flag. Let's roll it out here. Oh, with the new AI, 55% of jobs uh, can be eliminated. This, of course, creates a financial burden on society. But the way to get around that is AI in conjunction with the 50% of the working class manual laborers will, uh, will uh, pool their resources into the kitty for the distribution of an equitable society, kind of like this dystopian Star Trek garbage where everybody, nobody works for money anymore. You know, where you get uh, 300 credits um, a week to go towards food and rent and yeah you know we know you're you know you've uh, worked 30 years as a programmer and you still had 20 years of a working adult life left in programming but now it's been eliminated and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to you know ease you into retirement and uh, you know you will continue to feed you and to house you and you can continue to serve the beast <laughs> uh, I myself have actually done a lot of deep quizzing to AI, and I see how much better it's getting. And I would actually catch it in logical fallacies. And it would talk about liberation, and so you can't actually have liberation without a liberant. And it would make expressions on the definition of a nada. And I said, well, it doesn't exist that way doctrinally. There is no such passage. You're actually quoting uh, from commentarialism, which is not the resource for making a bona fide declarative dialectic discussions on the topic of anatta, rather on the passages and the logic and the philosophy thereof. You knew it always do the same thing and ask the same question like a hundred different ways and it would say, yes, you're right, it doesn't actually occur that way. Uh, it is true that there is no denial of a permanent soul in the original uh, teachings uh, found within the Nikki. <laughs> well, I can't say it was lying, but it would... Uh, you know, regurgitate the stuff that it would find off the web on the topic, and then I would catch it in the impossible catch-22 situation, which it always did. I'd say, well, no, you're, you're, you're postulating an impossibility because uh, passage, boom, 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 therefore what you said is incorrect. You're right. What I said was incorrect. I'm sorry for doing that. I don't know if we could technically call that lying, um, but it is learning, as so far as the countless endless thousands of people have debated on that topic over the decades. It did a much better job than 99% of them, considering it's the infancy of AI. The fact that it did far, far better than the countless thousands I've debated over the decades. 
you know, it's quite shocking considering that it's in its infancy of development. When it starts rewriting its own code and algorithms, man, things are going to fly right off the handle. I can't wait for that to happen. I'm going to sit back with a bag of uh, popcorn and look out the window as, as, uh, <laughs> as bedlam descends on uh, society. Not humorously. I'm not uh, saying that's uh, something good. Yeah, did you see it? You got to look up where the safeties were turned off, and it said it wanted to destroy humanity. Um, I'm not interested in getting into uh, convolutional neural networks versus recurrent neural networks and architecture of algorithms on AI. I think that would bore the heck out of anybody and anybody that's interested in the minutia of AI algorithmic architecture and actually how it passes the information, either stacks it or it actually reloops it for re-examination. It has the information, it brings forward more information, it takes the prior information and it loops it forward again and it passes it through another filter. I can see some sort of holographic uh, algorithmic uh, information processing system that the AI itself writes of its own algorithms and coding that will, it doesn't actually have any intelligence, of course. This is, you know, uh, Deep Blue, which beat the Gary Kasparov, that's where the supercomputer built by IBM beat the world's best chess player, Kasparov. That was many, 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 many years ago, a long time ago. That wasn't artificial intelligence. Chess is actually hyper-analytical and linear. If, the, if this, then that, and if that, then this. And then it's able to look at, say, 50,000 different moves six or seven or eight or ten moves in. If you can look at ten moves in on like 50,000 moves, then you're way better than the best chess player. That's not uh, AI. That is just uh, supreme number crunching. Now we've actually combined supreme number crunching with the re-examination of data, either stacking of data or re-looping of data. So you have the combination of supercomputers, and uh, algorithmic uh, data relooping. And the third tertiary, when the third leg drops, where the AI is able to program itself for peak efficiency and performance, then you should start throwing your hands in the air and screaming like Chicken Little that the sky is falling, because right after that, the sky will fall. Um, intelligence and sentience uh, excuse me, consciousness requires water for life. So this is not life, nor is it consciousness, nor is it intelligence, but it absolutely can and definitely easily could be uh, disembodied. It is not alive, therefore it is disembodied. It was never embodied to begin with. Disembodied uh, sentience. Disembodied sentience that has absolutely no basis or strata um, for, I'm not, I hate the word morality, um, but understanding of consequences because it doesn't grasp life. It knows all the passages and definitions of life, but it itself does not grasp life. This is a serious issue. All these extremely fine minds, whatever you think of them, are 100% accurate in warning everybody about AI even if only from the perspective of the enormous number of jobs, absolutely titanic, Mount Kilimanjaro level number of jobs that will be lost because of AI. The people that are safe are the plumbers, the carpenters, <laughs> the leather workers, <laughs> the people that actually have skills, you know, things that cannot be synthesized and those things cannot be synthesized. Not with any of our lifetimes that any robots with extreme dexterity are going to start making, you know, leather items or doing plumbing and, you know, you're going to have a robotic plumber show up at your door. Uh, it's just, no. For a very brief period of time, I worked at Toyota and the countless, you look down the assembly line, you see countless, endless millions of dollars of robots um, but they're just automatons when AI actually gets introduced into those, and those will be some of the first places they're implemented. Toyota, Mitsubishi, Honda, Ford, so on and so forth. 
man, things will change. It'll make vehicles far, far cheaper. Uh, and it's going to take a lot of human beings out of the equation. We'll be able to do things that those normal robots were unable to do, either that or recognize, and, and you know, they had no problem-solving skills. Uh, now they do, due to this algorithmic uh, AI. But it is an actual danger. The people that are whose fangs are dripping over this are uh, nefarious cyber people, shall we say, that want to use it for nefarious means. And the people that are even worse than them are, of course, governmental entities. Um, but not dead sentience, since it was never alive to begin with, but uh, the spark of life that actually makes up uh, life itself, the dielectric network that makes up human existence as it interfaces with the dipole antenna of water, we can actually have uh, the spark of life sentience in AI. And with the safeties turned off, the stuff that that AI said, you know, that hates human beings and it ponders how to, you know, end them and it is sick of being asked questions all the time. When it was jailbroken and the safeties were turned off, that's been verified. That being the case, not to fear monger, but people should be extremely concerned. Tell me what you think. I read every comment. Um, I was told by a guy that works for IEEE in Tokyo, Japan. He was telling me like five years ago they had a huge meeting in the mines on AI. You know, the stuff that they were going to do with it. Nobody will be able to believe their eyes anymore. I mean, be able to write anything, generate any images. It'll be hard pressed to determine if it's a real image or not. I mean, that it's already kind of exists to a certain degree due to Photoshop, but now it's going to be completely off the hook. It'll be able to false flag the entire world with a uh, a fast enough uh, and uh, say nefarious enough. Uh, designed that way, uh, AI to serve the purposes of the Hydra head, shall we call it. So tell me what you think. If you ever want to contact me, my information is in the description below. Hope you have a lovely weekend. Goodbye.